Hey, what's up? This is your boy, Elijah. Welcome back to another edition of Glenn's How I See It. Um, I wanted to kind of go back over this video. Uh, I had to take one down just a few moments ago uh, about um, these individuals that have decided to put the top 20 dads uh, in the past 30 uh, years up. And I wanted to get your thoughts, but I also wanted to put my thoughts on screen as well. So here we go. Uh, this was from uh, today. This was like back in 2020 during Father's Day. So I am rather late, of course. <clears throat> but I, I saw it and I was like, I, I got to share this with some people, especially since I'm doing the Humble Dad uh, videos. And so uh, I want I want to go through them real quick. And uh, I want you to leave a comment in the sec, you know, down in the comment section, uh, and let me know if you agree or disagree with me or uh, with 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 the uh, with the list. All right, so here we go. Now, some of these people I know, some of these people I don't know, uh, and so I am going to give my uh, response or reaction based on that. And so here we go. Uh, Walter White uh, in Breaking Bad. From from what I've heard, he was a uh, the dad that was um, selling um, you know some narcotics, if you will, uh, something like that, uh, to, or meth, should I say, uh, to provide for his family. Uh, I don't, I wouldn't consider that a good dad, but however, they have listed him top twenty. To win Lannister, Game of Thrones. Uh, from what it says that <laughs> they had him die on Father's Day. So it says that he is not a good dad. However, I'm assuming that uh, there, that he was a good actor of a bad dad. However, I, I would not put him on any top 20 of best dads if that's where we're, you know, if we're talking about uh, good dads or humble dads. Uh, Michael Blue. I've seen him in other TV shows, but I have not seen him in this one. Uh, so I cannot say if he was a good dad or not. Like, it doesn't stick out in my mind uh, at, at all uh, as, as being a good dad. But however, it says, there is no doubt Michael Blue's uh, a family man. After all, he spent season after season supporting his semi-delusional siblings and parents. But it's his relationship with his son, George Michael, that really showcases his uh, his best dad like qualities. Uh, he's protective, encouraging and loving, even when everything seems to be crumbling around him. So if that is the case of what he was doing, then I would say that this would be considered a humble dad, a.k.a. good dad. Then we go with Bob Belcher. I mean, his last name is Belcher. <clears throat> no disrespect, but just a funny name okay bob's burgers so he's an individual i never heard of either uh but from what it says he is an individual that was supporting his family uh by working at a burger joint okay maybe he was the cook it says the head of the cartoon family always embraces the wacky and weird character traits of his wife and kids while still being super tolerant supportive and loving so tolerant supportive and loving good characteristics Top 20, I would say, I, I mean, I can name a couple of different people, but I'm going to wait to after this list, uh, after I finish this list to tell you about it. Frank Costanza, I mean, even in this picture, he is not enjoying his dad, right? Uh, his dad was a little crazy. Even mom looks at him and is like, what is going on with you, homie? Uh, and so it says the highly volatile Frank Costanza, the father, father of George Costanza, argue with pretty much everyone. At one point in time, that was me, that I argued with everybody. I st it's, people that know me watch this and say, well, you still argue with everybody. Uh, well, which is true to a degree, but I'm usually um, wanting to actually know your perspective as opposed to before. I was just trying to get my point across. So um, I, I'm, I think I'm a more loving, caring, uh, and thoughtful type of guy. Um, than I was in, in my, my twenties in early. Yeah. In my twenties for sure. Okay. Then you have <clears throat> Sandy Cohen. Don't know him. Top 20. I mean, 
I heard of the OC, never watched it. Don't even know how good or how bad he was. Raymond definitely was a, a interesting individual. Love everybody loves Raymond. Uh, he loved his kids. Uh, tried to show love to his wife. Seemed for me though when I watched it that he inter- he he had more interactions with his wife, his brother, and uh, his mom and dad more so than his kids. Yes, he did have interaction with his kids, and you can see his love and appreciation for them. But it wasn't. It didn't seem to be centered around him as a dad. But okay, we'll give him that. Uh, but I would consider him a good dad. Okay, humble dad. Ray Barron might be a little clueless when it comes to helping out around the house, but there's never any doubt about his love for his three children, whether he's trying to help his daughter sell cookies or win an argument with his son's school. I <laughs> uh, wish we could watch that, uh, that ep- some of these episodes. That'd be hilarious to give a commentary on. Then you have uh, Tony Soprano, who was with the mob, right? But however, he did not, I didn't, I didn't watch this, you know, uh, HBO, the, you know, I, I didn't, I couldn't, aff- I wouldn't, I would say I couldn't afford cable. I just didn't want that type of cable. I didn't want HBO because they play a lot of the re- a lot of reruns. But it says that he might not want his children to follow him into the family business, but he used his time in the mob to provide for his wife and two children and make all their goals accessible. Okay, when he's not working in waste management, <laughs> well, you know what that means. He always is available to offer fatherly advice, help his kids work through their problems or just enjoy a family dinner at the local diner. That's pretty cool. So he would go out to eat with his family, even though he was a mobster, uh, which which could be devastating. Uh, I don't know how it ended, uh, but a mobster in the public eye with his family. This just seems very chaotic or potentially be chaotic. Then you have Homer Simpson, good dad, Ah, you know, I didn't watch a lot of Homer Simpson or the Simpsons, but I would say that, you know, he seemed to be there ever. He he was there present with them a lot and he was trying to uh, coach them, but they made him out to be not smart of a dad. Um, And so he's been out for a while. Homer Simpson proved that fatherhood and hilarity are not mutually exclusive in his nonsensical manner. Uh, Homer manages to teach his three children that even when life it, when life gets messy, it's possible to laugh and have fun along the way. And so I, I would say that, you know, I would need to make my list to see if Homer would be on it and uh, kind of think about the different individuals that are uh, dads. But he might he might make it. Uh, he might make it. I'm not sure. Steve Brady. I was talking to my wife about how this was like she said, uh, no. There's no way that he could be on this list at all. Um, he was in and even though he was like in and out of the the life of the the, the mother and the kid, um, she said she said that he seemed to be uh, not manly, you know, you know. And so you can agree or disagree. Let me know because I I don't I didn't see or watch this show that often. Okay, HBO again, you know. I want. I want to do. They got some ties to the show. Who doesn't love Steve? The off again, on again, romantic partner to Miranda Hobbs. Steve was the good guy who almost finished last. Thankfully for us viewers, he always sticks around to deal with Miranda's cynical ways and shows up for their son Brady no matter what. So if he showed up, that's a good dad no matter what. He dealt with a, uh, a crazy uh, person, crazy woman, a crazy baby mama, and he was still there. Kudos to him. I would say that's a pretty good dad. Top 20, I couldn't, I would not say that he was top 20. I don't even remember him like that. Johnny Rose, no. I don't, <laughs> this dude has never played a good dad. So I get, I could not even think about that he was a good dad in this particular episode show, uh, but it's on Netflix. The Perennial Optimist, Johnny Rose is a dad. You want by your side when things get tough and his fatherly advice extends to those uh, beyond his immediate family, too. One of the sweetest parts of uh, the, the show is seeing his pseudo father daughter relationship with Stevie develop over the years. OK, so if he was developing a relationship with his daughter, then that's awesome, because that is the definition of being a good dad is being there for your kids. 
Then Eric Taylor, Friday Night Lights. I mean, in this right here, this doesn't look like a loving father, but sometimes uh, that happens. I mean, coaches do this all the time. I remember coaches yelling at me. Uh, I didn't. I didn't see them as a negative person. I, you know, unless unless they did not show me another side of them. You know, so Eric Taylor didn't even watch the show. I mean, notice that how many I have not watched the scene. It just seems like this is this is not a a list for everybody, okay? We it, it, unless I'm just out of pop culture like that for a long time, I should have known who these people were, okay? Though uh, Eric is a loving father to his children, he also acts as a father to his football team. Uh, Andre Dre from Blackish. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I said in one of my uh, in the first video that I would say, OK, that's cool. He can be top 10, maybe. But once again, I, I can list a whole bunch of dads in the th in, in the 30 years uh, that, that he would not be in the top 10 with. But the thing of it is that he is he like all of them are there for the, in, in the house with the kids. But the, the, the wisdom that they provide is, is an interesting take on things. And it really seems to be just one sided, you know, uh, as far as when, when he's teaching. Right. But uh, and it seems to be he, he ha he's having to learn lessons from uh, other people, not him actually being the uh, the leader of wisdom in his house. It seems that from what I've seen, he's always getting it from somewhere else. OK. Danny Tanner, uh, I thought he was a really good dad. I mean, it's cor he was corny, cheesy, uh, whatever you want to say. But, you know, him being a single father, I thought that was dope to show that th those type of indiv those type, those individuals exist. Um, and I, I know some people that have uh, I know some some some, some uh, sons and daughters that have had to be raised by uh, their dad. Uh, following the, the loss of their their mother, uh, it, it can be pretty devastating, you know? And so, uh, or it is devastating. And so here you had um, Mr. Mr. Tanner who had his friends come in and help him out as well. And eventually he found love, but all the while he was always th thankful and appreciative of his kids. Carl Winslow, top, uh, top six, hey, this young, this dude right here, we're watching this show currently on a, on Hulu, I believe. And he, <laughs> I did not know how funny this show was. I mean, I watched this in the in the nineties. I was like, probably I was sixth, seventh, eighth grade, getting a, and then gotten out of getting out of uh, going into college uh, when this show was on on the air. And I thought that it was a phenomenal show, uh, especially considering the, the lessons that they were trying to teach in just 22 minutes, I thought it was outstanding. Um, he seems to be, uh, he, he was wise, and but he was always going to somebody else to learn the lesson as well so far, which is not a, which is not a bad thing, but he was able to correct himself, which is a, a really good definition of a, of a mature individual who is who sees the flaw in himself and says, you know what, I got to correct this. And then I'm, I'm willing to go apologize to my kid. So I thought that was pretty dope. And, and, and that was like in first seasons that uh, in the first season where he apologized for being a little uh, out of there <laughs> when it came to, to uh, trying to teach his kids something. This guy, I don't even know. Randall Pearson, you can tell me uh, in This Is Us. Uh, from uh, from what it says, one third of the big three. Many of the moments that give us major mushy feels on This Is Us are because of Randall's dad duty skills, which he puts to the, to work on his three daughters, Tess, Annie, and Deja, from accepting Tess when she uh, comes out uh, to navigating the difficulties of fostering a teenager. Randall steps in the footsteps of his dad, Jack Pearson, with honor and integrity. OK, so if he was there accepting of his, his kid, not necessarily agreeing, but being there as far as loving his kid and um, appreciating uh, who they are as an individual, then it's kudos to him. You know, uh, that's not something necessarily that anybody 
not everybody is cool with or knows how to accept and be able to walk in something like that. So uh, I've never seen the show, but if he was supportive, then that's a good dad. I would put him on. I, I don't know how good, I would put him on the list. Probably top 20. I'll have to go. Like I said, I got to go through my list. And Dan Connor. Absolutely. Uh, he was pretty reserved, dude. I mean, his 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 uh his wisdom um, was highlighted during the course of the show. Um, he was funny uh, as well, uh, and he wasn't over the top with 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 his mannerisms, which I can definitely appreciate. <laughs> but I definitely would keep him on the list. Maybe top ten. Maybe top ten. Level headed, easy going, reliable, and caring. Uh, he, he he took care of his four kids, was loving to his wife, showed his kids how to uh, you know be loving uh, uh, to to whenever they got married <clears throat> or as they grew up. So I, I definitely would agree with that one. And Philip Banks, Uncle Phil is what we call him, right? Everybody knows. Uh, easy top ten. I mean, and he he was a a, a, a dad to. To Will Smith, who it who it wasn't his um, biological son, as well as it was they shared no blood relation, which is even even so, even more dope to me, is that he's he he adopted him basically, and it was his it was his wife's sister's uh, son, and so he took him in and educated him on life's. Um, ups and downs. He he was his 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 judge. He was also his defendant. Um, uh, as as far as him being, you know, he was a judge, and so he would punish him. But also, when he need when Will needed it, he would come to to his aid. Also, he was his counselor. He was he embodied so many different elements of what uh, uh, men for sure need growing up. And girls need as well. He was loving to all of his kids. And uh, I appreciate that about him. I could go on for days. I may do a, 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 a sit, uh, you know, a small um, um, rendition, if you will, about individual dads. Let me know if you want it. Would that be cool or not? And then you had <clears throat> from the modern family, Finn Dunphy. Dunphy. I don't know who this guy is. OK, I know I heard a modern family didn't watch this show. Um, He's number two on the list. They said he was a cool dad. Listen, I'm gonna be cool. I think I'm a cool dad, but I'm 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 going to be the dad that we have fun, but I'm also gonna discipline you, right? Uh, so if he was that type of guy, then I'm down for it. But he says that he was puriting, puriting. So <clears throat> a combination of talking like a peer but acting like a parent. Nah, not finna try to. Uh, get myself to sound like anybody. And then number one, Jack Pearson, this is us. No disrespect. But I have no idea how he could be number one. No disrespect. Okay. And our number one spot is the patriarch of the Pearson clan played by Milo uh, Vincent Maglia. I'm sure I mispronounced that. He always swoops in at the perfect moment to help his children. The big three feel accepted and loved for exactly who they are. He champions self-love overall while still showing up for his family whenever they need him and giving them an insurmountable amount of unconditional love. And if so, if that's him, dope. I applaud him for being that type of dad. But can you believe the people that are missing? Okay. Pause the video, put down in the link, tell in the comment section, who do you see that's missing? For me, listen, for me, who's missing is none other than none other. Come on, man. None other than he, Cliff Huxtable. They're, they're, like, I don't understand. How is it that Bill Cosby is not on this list? Makes literally zero sense. Okay. How is he not on the list? He was America's dad, bro. America's dad. I This list is obviously biased. Okay. I don't know who they surveyed or who they came up with. Maybe it's for controversial conversation. 
maybe. And that is what they got, and that's what they get. Uh, I would say uh, uh, Tool Man, Tim, Tim, Tim Allen is not on the list. How? <clears throat> um, Damon Wayne from My Wife and Kids is not on the list. How? There's just three just off the top of the head, okay? Now, you, you may agree with this list. I don't know why, okay? But I, <laughs> I'm i going to have to make my own list, okay? That's, probably, that's what it is. I'm going to have to make my own list. So I digress. And so please make sure you leave a comment, like, share, subscribe to the channel, all that jazz. But please, I want to know what you got to say about this particular list. Uh, this is my time. Thank you for, so, for watching the channel. This is Glenn's How I See It. Till next time, we out of here. Deuces.